no film can cater to all audiences, and most shouldn't even try. It's not who I am anymore, you understand? Interesting. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 PG-13 rated movies that should have been rated R. For this list, we're looking at films that, when released theatrically, were either cut down in content to avoid an R rating, or were tinkered with from the start to appeal to a broader audience. This is clearly an attempt to sway public opinion with a no, marketing what's stunt. clear is that with just one system in place, we've cut crime by 80%. Just imagine if we put, I don't know, let's say 100 systems in place. It should be noted that some of these films were successful at the box office, and some were even critically well-received. Most fans and critics will agree, however, that the extra push for a more mature rating wouldn't have hurt these movies. You have all the weapons you need. Now fight. Number 10, Terminator Genesis. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys. You remember the Terminator films, right? You know, those unstoppable cyborg fight fests with harsh language and bloody action? Well, Hollywood felt that after years of R-rated exclusiveness, it was time to branch out to a wider audience. While Genesis isn't the first PG-13 rated entry in this franchise, it was a mistake to keep that trend going after Terminator Salvation was so poorly received. Make your choice. If you ask most fans, Genesis didn't need to exist in general. Nice to see you. Get out. Despite Arnold Schwarzenegger's praised return, treating the film with kid gloves didn't help its chances of being a new launch point for the once prideful Terminator series. I'm old, not obsolete. Number nine, Insidious. Shine the light on Josh. I'm here. I'm Josh. You've got to call him back. We've got to call him back. Most horror movies in general should be created with an R rating in mind. The images they can produce are often intense and can sometimes stick in your head for days. Insidious, from director James Wan, centers on a family trying to keep ghosts from taking over their son. We are calling out to you, Dalton. Tell us you're safe. Tell us where you are. Unsurprisingly, this storyline produces some of those aforementioned long-lasting horror images. Despite a PG-13 rating giving audiences the okay to bring their kids in with them, it shouldn't come as a shock to anyone if their kids come running to them in the middle of the night, saying they dreamt of some of the scary stuff they saw in Insidious. <laughs> Horror is a fun genre, but maybe it's not for all ages. <laughs> Number eight, Mortal Kombat. <laughs> you fool! Mortal Kombat was, and still is, one of the bloodiest video games of all time. After its release in the arcade, a live action feature was inevitable. The film itself is okay, bearing the look and characters of the video game, plus that kick-ass theme song. Weak, pathetic fools, I've come for your souls. I don't think so. Yet, there's still a grave disappointment that came with its PG-13 rating. This means no blood and gore, poor fatalities, and pretty much none of the gruesome imagery that Mortal Kombat is best known for. Right! Finish him! <laughs> no, sir, no! Don't! I'll give me a break. Okay. It might have been a box office champ, but the film was far from a flawless victory when it comes to faithfully adapting its source material. Get over here! Number seven, Sucker Punch. He brings in his clients, and we gotta make him feel, you know. Director Zack Snyder followed up his successful R-rated adaptations of 300 and Watchmen with this stylish fantasy action flick. Following the exploits of Baby Doll, who seeks to escape an insane asylum slash brothel, the film boasts much of Snyder's visual flair and skill for darker storytelling. Mine's personal 
that says who I am. What the heck does yours say? It says I'm going to escape from here. That I'm going to be free. With subject matter that deals with lobotomy and the danger of rape at the hands of the insane head honchos of the facility, it's kind of strange that this movie wasn't rated R. Oh, is that it? Is that all you got? Snyder reportedly originally wanted it to be that way, but had to cut scenes for the censors. So, don't feel bad about killing them. They're already dead. Maybe he also did it to bring younger viewers, especially girls, into an action film led by powerful female leads. Whatever the reasons, the decision was a sucker punch to the film and led it to underperform at the box office. How about something a little more uh, commercial, for God's sakes? Number six, The Expendables 3. Believe it or not, this wasn't the first attempt to make the Expendables franchise more open to all ages. The same tactic had been attempted with the Expendables 2. You will force me to cut his heart out. Too much piece of shit. This was quickly met with rage and boycott threats from fans. Watch closely. And again. Anybody else? The Expendables series is supposed to be filled with nods to the glory days of 80s action films. So you're really gonna go back? Yeah. Alone? Yeah. You an idiot. There should be a ton of blood, one-liners, muscle-bound strongmen, and a lot of explosions. Compared to the first two films, The Expendables 3 is pretty tame and borderline boring, even with all the explosions. Hopefully, the lesson will be learned here for future installments of this action franchise, and we can get back to basics. Number five, The Wolverine. <laughs> Comic book readers know Wolverine as one of the deadliest, most badass characters ever created. While we got to glimpse some of his famous berserker rage in X2, moviegoers haven't been treated to a true show of his full abilities. Yeah. 2013's The Wolverine could have been the opportunity fans had been waiting for. That's right. Wait, wait. No! You wanted the truth! I told you the truth! I didn't like it. We mean, come on. It's Wolverine versus ninjas in Japan. That's a blood fest waiting to happen. Sadly, the X-Men franchise has been keen on keeping their films open to all theater-going audiences. What kind of monster are you? The Wolverine. We did, however, get an unrated version with the Blu-ray release, but come on, we want to see that added R stuff up on the big screen. Go f yourself, pretty boy. Hey, Deadpool delivered the naughty parts. Why couldn't Logan? In case the other fell off. Number four, Robocop. Alex, you have to stop. Please. Alex. Please stop. Much like Terminator, Robocop was a staple of the 80s action genre. Go ahead. The original was one of the most excessively violent action films ever made. And that violence is one of the main reasons people remember it. <laughs> Rebooting the character for a new generation wasn't a terrible idea. I mean you no know, harm. Huh? If I wanted to, I could have killed you a long time ago. No, the terrible idea was eliminating most of the violence especially with regards to how cop Alex Murphy becomes the titular cyborg. Whether or not this reboot is better than its PG-13 brother Robocop 3 is debatable. Stop them! Stop them! Still, this action film doesn't hold a candle to the very hard R entries that preceded it. In front of everyone. 
Compress! <laughs> Number three, Pearl Harbor. Hammer down! Using film to teach a history lesson isn't an uncommon practice. Still, there is a difference between the hard R realism of a film like Saving Private Ryan and the young adult marketed and PG-13 rated Pearl Harbor. Director Michael Bay's retelling of the December 1941 attack on the titular naval base had its moments of intensity, but focusing on a boring love triangle for younger audiences, rather than going for an honest war tragedy, felt like an insult to the historic event itself. Get the ammo for that 50 cow! Get that 50 cow! Though a triumph at the box office, Pearl Harbor is far from the over-the-top, violent explosion fests Michael Bay is best known for. Number two, live free or die hard. Jerk off! This one might be one of the most successful entries on this list, with some calling this movie the best die hard since the original. Come on to the coast, we get together, have a few laughs. Still, making a die hard movie PG-13 isn't without drawbacks. The blood and violence the franchise is partly known for is tremendously toned down compared to previous entries. <laughs> And while John McClane remains the king of badass one-liners, his signature motto is almost completely muted. How about yippee ki That alone is pretty unforgivable. Probably best to stick with an R rating and let McClane do his thing unhindered and uncut. Playtime's over, sweetheart. Don't. Take your hand off the gun. Then again, it's not like an R rating saved a good day to die hard. So that's not your thing, John. What's that? <laughs> Killing bad guys, that's your thing. Before we reveal our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Number one, World War Z. How do we know they're coming? They're coming. A zombie outbreak that wreaks havoc on a global scale? Coming over the top! <laughs> like zombies desperate for brains, this is the kind of undead epic fans of the zombie genre have been clamoring for. And while World War Z boasts great scope and superstar Brad Pitt, it loses some of its intensity with the dialed down rating. <laughs> the Romero style carnage we find in most battles against the undead are nowhere to be seen in this Mark Forster directed movie. <laughs> While a fun film, World War Z could have been better if it had been given the chance to show those old-school gruesome zombie horror tropes on a worldwide stage. Do you agree with our list? Which movie do you think would have been stronger with an R rating? I don't even think about going for that piece of garbage in the back. Come on. That's it. That's it. For more entertaining top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. That's really disturbing, right? You'll get used to it. <laughs>